Os. A solid, hoofed plant eating domesticated mammal with a flowing mane and tail. Used for riding, racing, to carry and pull loads based in the Black Country. Horses provided an important mode of transport in the Black Country well into the 20th century and were a critical part of daily life. They were originally used as draft animals to haul narrow boats loaded with goods on the canals. They were also used to drag heavy coal carts and pull trams, carriages, milk floats, delivery wagons and fire engines. Heavy horses, usually shires, were used for haulage in the heavy industry, but the majority of the work was done using half-leg or short-legged shire crossbreed horses. These were used to pull smaller two-wheel carts and canal boats as they were lighter to handle and cheaper to feed. These types of horses were kept all over the Black Country and were important to the inhabitants of West Bromwich, Oldbury, Blackheath, Cradley Heath, Old Hill, Bilston, Dudley, Tipton, Wensfield and parts of Isles Owen, Wensbury and Warsaw. But this culture of keeping horses has never completely died. A group of young people based in Tipton are working hard to keep the culture alive. My name's Tammy Evans and I'm 26 years old. Um, it's like my granddad used to have horses when my mum was growing up and my mum always been around and my mum started going into them so it kind of like brought me into them as well. I'm 25 and my name is Shane Potter. I wanted to keep horses because of my partner. She was, her family's been brought up around them. As far as I was concerned it was my partner's granddad, her mother and that, their aunties and was keeping the horses. I was keeping them for roughly around about probably six, seven years. It was a gypsy cob and it was called Bruno. I'm Stacy, I'm 19 and I'm 47. Uh, my nan, well, my nan and my granddad had them for my mum and then my mum got me into having them. So I got it from my mum and my granddad basically. Um, I've, had, I've had them most of my life. I, I had them when I was younger and then I took a break and then I got back into about five or six years ago. I've got three horses in total in the family. One's mine, two's my sister's. Yeah, we all go up there and help each other out. If I can't go up there, my mum will do them. If my mum can't go up there, I'll do them. These young people caring for the horses have been doing this by using their own funds have had no formal education, training or work experience and learned to look after them by sharing knowledge with other people who have horses at the yard. It's clear that the horses aren't just kept as pets and means a lot more to the group than first made to the eye. It makes me happy keeping horses. It passes time away, keeps you busy, keeps you out of trouble. A few years back, I was in a lot of trouble with the old bill. I was done a few stretches in prison, and it's just something that's keep me, keeping me on top of not being there no more. It, was, it wasn't a good experience in prison at all. Not a good place to be. I won't wish it on anyone because it's a nasty place. Not full of nice people at all. You just, I think it gives you something to do through the day. So like, you, you like, cause you're with everybody, like talking to people. It's like, it's something to do. What was there? Yeah. Might do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the enjoyment of having a big friendly giant to call them. It's like going up there and brushing them, spending time with them, comes part of the family. 
makes us feel happy knowing that like we've got something to do then sit there and not waste our life away doing nothing. We'd be bored if we didn't have them. Because cause we do, our aspect is driving them, so they taught me how to drive. My mum taught me how to drive an horse, how to harness one up and that, and how to look at my granddad and that helped help, help, teach me how to look after one. I think you, I get like, it builds, it builds character and confidence, I think. Because obviously the stuff you have to deal with them, um, people you have to deal with them, um, so I think it just builds, builds confidence in that. I think money side and knowing what to do, I think that's probably the biggest challenge is about keeping an horse. My mum kind of picked some stuff up when she was growing up, off my granddad, and then like going up the yard, we knew like picked it up as we go along. If we don't know what to do, we just Google it and Google it. Helps. <laughs> we know bits and basics. It's better to just go out there and learn everything else. And we've been spending most of our time with them, so we might as well get to do it all better. Well, oh, yeah. You get some people that I 100% on it, like they'll moan about the softest things. And then there's some, uh, like, you'll see them with the kids, and I'm like, oh, can I stroke your horse? And it's like, yeah, of course you can, it's no problem. So I think some people, like, they enjoy seeing it, and then you get others that are keen, so just, you know, that's something you have to deal with. You get some of the people that know what we do, what we do up there and everything, and then you get the stuck-up ones that don't want it around, don't want the horse poop going around the streets and everything. <laughs> if the council have stopped us using grazing, or like on the fields and stuff like that. The bailiffs to come and take them and you have to pay a fortune to get them back otherwise they sell them on, which I fair. I think because where the yard is that we keep them, over the road, there's like bungalows for like older people. I think because of the horses being up and down the street and people in the yard, they are exactly the quirks all the time, so I think that's mostly where the complaints come from. It's, it's our animal, we should be able to like put it where we want to put it or anything else. Fair enough if like, you have got permission to put it on there, then I understand it, but they're not, they're not giving us permission to rent the fields or nothing, so there's nothing more you can do. Like, it's like a horse family type thing. You, you, you're all mucking together, you help each other. And it's, I suppose it's what the horse game's all about. It's good, it's like part of the family as well up there. You like go out and go on the drives with them and it's like just going to visit part of the family being up there. <laughs> At the minute my baby's going through some tests for a biopsy because they might think you have cancer. So like being up there, it like keeps you busy and occupied in your mind off other things. It's amazing because um, they're doing a big drive um, in May and donating it all to Birmingham Children's Hospital, which is where he is. So it's like they do good courses for you, for you as well, like just like the family sticking together sort of thing. Because of the situation at home, the young people decided to put on a charity event to raise money for Birmingham Children's Hospital to return their gratitude for helping their son. Do you want me to show us? What tricked me to Centre today organising the stuff for the fundraiser for the drive on the 7th of May? Having a big funding event, all money goes to the children's hospital. I'm having a big drive with all the horses, going to um, a 12 mile on the horses, ending up back here and having all the big funding auctions, table top sales and everything else. people showed such an interest in the equine industry and wanted to move on from DIY learning to gaining formal qualifications which would allow them to find work in this area and pursue their dreams. Yeah, it's a horse course and uh, we do like riding in there and looking after the other people's horses in there. Really big horses to be fair. <laughs> 
and everything like that. We take the horses out, bring them in, rug them up, and look after them and everything for them. We bring, we don't have to look after six, seven horses each, bringing them in, them out of the field, take them out into a field, feeds, mix up the feed, make sure we've got water, brush them, get the feeds out. Basic horse care. That's why it's little. And you're like, oh sorry, oh I've poked him with that thing. Fingernails, and I used to trim his fingernails. Well, I always used to cut his fingernails. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so they want to say, hey, don't be sorry, these horses are quite tough. But they are like kids, but you will make mistakes, but don't worry yourself too much about it. I enjoy it very much. It's made me better in myself. Talent Match facilitated this equine course alongside Graham Coffey, one of the directors from Sporting Schools, so that the young people could get the qualifications they needed. And we've been working for these young people for probably six months now. Um, we basically started a course where it was an introduction to equine for them because they've got an interest in horses. Um, then what we decided to do was put some qualifications to it because they wanted to push themselves a little bit more. So now we run a course with them two days a week um, for the next couple of months and they're doing courses in equine um, through the uh, Association of British Riding Schools and Open College Network. Do you know where they actually are though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't get them trick you. Yeah. Don't get them trick you. <laughs> when I've done it with the kids they just shout things at me and then when I say, where's that on the horse? They're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that hot? That's the hot here. Yeah. How many hocks do they have? Just two. Yeah, what's on the front leg then? Knees. Yeah. Sit down hard in this one. Oh, of course, see? Eh? <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit hard work. Yeah, but it's alright, it's, it's so much to do, eh? Helping like you learning your new stuff that you die now that you think, oh I didn't know that but you die, so you've learnt it there. No, they were quite quite shy, a little bit reserved to start with. Um, they kind of didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what to expect. We knew that they got a good understanding of horses. Um, so we were kind of thinking maybe they'll come here and uh, they'll be a little bit kind of cocky with it all, but they weren't. They were kind of a little bit more reserved. It helped me a lot because I've never ride like a bigger horse. My horse has only ever been 13 hands, if not 14. But like up there we ride like 16 hand horses and I never thought in my life I'd ride the horse that big. <laughs> As time has gone on, that has just altered completely. Um, I would say now that they're very, very confident young people. They've all progressed at different stages. Um, the things that, that they're doing now with the experience they've got from the course is just second to none. It's really good to see what they've done. I've gained teamwork, working to deadlines. I've pushed myself further with having the confidence to mess with bigger horses. And I've gained more than my riding skills. I've learned more about the horse culture than what I already knew. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've gained a lot more confidence with like people and horses as well to be fair. So like, I'll be I'll be like, like less shy with new people. There's stuff I can do with horses now that I probably couldn't have done and I don't realise. I've been more confident in having going for an interview because I, I know more things about them. I'm able to ride better and in horse world now it's you've got to be able to do a bit of everything in the horse world now. Where at first I'd, and, I never really knew how to ride. I did bareback but I wouldn't use saddle. I can remember the first time I went to the course I refused to even get in a saddle and it's I prefer now to ride in saddle than out of a saddle. It's bettered me in the aspect of getting jobs in the horse world. It's building confidence better. And it's made teamwork. It made me feel good. The great in myself to be fair. <laughs> more confident in themselves. Um, they're more confident around strangers. Um, they are 
or they have been put in certain situations where they've, you know, they may have felt probably a little bit more uncomfortable by us telling them right, go and go and do stuff with people, you know, go and lunge a horse with somebody you don't know. Well, probably three or four months ago, they'd have been really nervous. Now they're running activities themselves with people who are not uh, necessarily um, horse orientated. Um, we're in a situation now where we're putting classes on for people and these young people are actually running the classes so it's everything from the basics of grooming a horse all the way through to running a horse uh, lunging it around the indoor arena or the out outdoor arena they're setting jumps up giving instruction to people who have only got basic horse riding skills and they're trying to push them along a bit more so they're doing really really well more to me and my family through what my little lad went through. My son, he had lymph node cancer under his armpit. Birmingham Children's Hospital went out tomorrow. They helped him get better, so raising that much money meant more that we could give them to go and help more kids. They put a fun day together for it. We managed to get a few horses together. It was a bigger turnout than what we realised. And we managed to raise quite a bit of money for it. So um, they did a pub crawl, people were walking around with like buckets to collect the money. Uh, they did like sales, like tabletop sales and then raffles and stuff like that. Over the course of the day, the young people managed to raise 3,018 pence for Birmingham Children's Hospital. I think it was a 12 mile drive for different pubs. We had auctions, we had like fun activities for the kids, time bowlers, everything there. It was a fun day for the kids. Um, they come from all over the UK, from London. There's a few from coming up from towards Scotland, come from all over. I'd say there's roughly, I think we got counted, it was near, near enough 350 horses. Couldn't count how many people because with the horses, there's, there's maybe two, three up, depending on what carts they had with them. and not tell them much have been there and support us all the way through it without them we wouldn't be able to do it. I'll use it to go and try and better myself with a career for me and my child and not go and hopefully hold our own stables. It's mainly my confidence being able, willing to be I'm more forward of going to say if I want to go for a job in the industry of the horses I'm more confident I'll be more confident in the interview and I've just got more experience in the horse world. I'm a lot more better, I'm better in my riding. No, I was better my, like, like I said, I used to drive, well, do more driving than riding, and now I can ride enough properly, like basically. I couldn't before. <laughs> well, it's all bare back now, saddles. Charlene's, if I need someone, Charlene's always there to talk to me. She's been there, she's been amazing for us, for everything, helped us with whatever we needed, she's been there and helped us with that, how we wouldn't be able to do it. And Graham, is. He's a character in himself. Graham's put with some <laughs> some abuse from us right the way. <laughs> it's funny. I won't I won't have a cup, cup of coffee off him. <laughs> I'm gonna use him obviously to better my future with getting a probably getting a job in the industry like equine industry. So I'll be able to that'll be that'll help me a lot.